In this video, we're going to cover uh, basic user interaction, uh, as well as selecting and working with objects within the program. We're going to start with a very basic interaction, uh, clicking, we're going to discuss selecting and reshaping and so on. Uh, let's start with, with clicking. Essentially, we're talking about using the various mouse buttons. Uh, left click, which is also known as the primary click or primary button on your mouse. Uh, this is the button on the left side of the mouse normally. Um, pretty much every mouse can perform this action. Uh, when we say right click, we're usually referring to a, the right button on your mouse. Most mice have a right button. Um, some touch mice, uh, this might not be a, a physical button, but the right side of the mouse is a separate area and will be considered a secondary click or a right click. Um, on Mac, you may need to enable secondary click in system preferences, um, or you can simply hold down the control key and do a standard left click or just primary click. Middle click, when we say middle click, we're normally referring to the middle mouse button or scroll wheel. If you don't have a mouse with a, a middle button or specifically a middle scroll wheel, uh, you might want to consider using a different mouse. This will make a lot of different actions uh, much easier. So now let's go into what we're going to use a, a left click for or primary button. This is normally used for selection. Uh, if you move your cursor over top of the edge of an object or within the bounds of an object that uh, has a solid surface and press the left button, uh, this will normally select the object as long as it's selectable. Uh, we'll go into more detail about how objects or when objects are selectable and not selectable in other videos. You can select uh, multiple objects in, in a few different ways. Um, first way, uh, you can just hold shift while selecting objects. Uh, this will essentially add each new selection uh, to your, your group. Uh, you can also uh, use a marquee selection. Essentially, uh, you click and hold, which means you're pressing down on the left mouse button and not releasing it and then moving the mouse. And as you see, you'll get this basically opaque uh, rectangle being drawn. Uh, pretty much any object that is within this, this rectangle will be selected once you release the mouse button. Um, you can also hold Alt uh, while doing this. And what this will do is as opposed to the object needing to be completely within the, uh, the, the marquee, uh, any object that you pass or cross over will be selected. Now let's get into just deselecting objects. Uh, easiest way to do this is to um, either click in a blank area when you have the selection tool active. Uh, the selection tool, like, as we mentioned earlier, is the first tool in the basic palette. Um, you just kind of click in a blank area and everything's deselected. Um, you can also press the X key twice, uh, the X key on your keyboard. Uh, this will do two things. One, it activates the selection tool and the second, uh, press of the X key will deselect any selected objects. Now let's uh, let's get into reshaping. As I mentioned earlier, when you have an object selected, uh, you will see these uh, little rectangles around the, uh, the the corners and the midpoints of each face of an object. These are the reshape handles. Uh, if you click directly on these, um, you can reshape an object so you can resize it. For example, here we have a rectangle and a uh, circle. Uh, the rectangle has uh, control handles at each of the four corners and uh, one control handle at each of the midpoint of each of the faces. Uh, the circle just has a single control handle. To interact with the control handles, uh, you simply uh, left click once on the control handle and release. Then as you move your mouse, uh, you will move the position of that control handle. Uh, to set the new position, you click once more with the left mouse button uh, to set the position. You can see different types of objects have different numbers of control handles. Uh, the circle, for instance, simply has one, and this is controlling the radius of the circle. The rectangle, however, has, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, four on each corner, uh, plus one additional one per face. Uh, this is similar for most polygons. Control handles are primarily used for uh, reshaping. Uh, for example, uh, if we take a look at the rectangle, if we click on one of the corner control handles, uh, we can move this left, right, up, down, and this will reshape and resize the uh, rectangle. Currently, uh, it is uh, an asymmetric scaling, but if you hold shift while doing this, 
it will constrain it to symmetrically scale the rectangle. If you just want to uh, scale the height or scale the width, um, essentially to do the height, you will grab one of the top or bottom control handles of this rectangle, and the width, uh, you would grab the uh, one of the left or right sides to adjust the, uh, the width. If you uh, double click on an object, this will activate the reshape tool. Uh, this tool gives you some added capability um, as opposed to the simple just scaling of the object. Uh, it gives you the ability to um, add, remove, or even uh, change the type uh, or vertice type of, uh, of a particular control handle. Uh, for example, here we have a, um, a polygon. I can um, double click on it, which you'll see in the basic palette activated the uh, reshape tool. I can now, since I'm in the first mode, essentially move each of these vertices into a new position. Uh, because it's in the first mode, uh, the first mode will allow me to move a control handle, which in this case is actually moving the position of a vertice. Uh, there's, all, there's various modes, as I mentioned, you can actually add additional vertices, remove vertices, um, or even change like a corner vertice to a curved uh, vertice. Now let's go into uh, moving objects. This is bringing in a new type of interaction uh, called uh, clicking and dragging. So if you want to move an object, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the selection tool active. Uh, you can either uh, press the X key, like I mentioned earlier, or select it in the basic palette. This is again going to be using a left click. Um, so you, on, on an object that has a solid fill like this rectangle, for example, we can click anywhere within the bounds of the object. You click and hold and then move your mouse uh, up and down, left or right. Uh, you'll see a preview of the object as you move it. And then as soon as you release your mouse, it will move the object to that location. Um, you can also move multiple objects at the same time. Um, you essentially uh, use shift or marquee uh, to select multiple objects and uh, repeat the same pr procedure, essentially click, hold, move, release. If you have an object that does not have a solid fill, uh, for example, here we have a rectangle that has no has fill of none. Uh, in order to select or move the object, you must make sure your cursor uh, is over top one of the edges of the objects. If we move inside, nothing happens. Essentially, we just start drawing a marquee. Uh, so, but if I move my cursor over top of the object or the edges of the object, you'll see you'll get this uh, the pre-selection highlighting indicating that if we now do a left click, this will select or interact with the object. Now let's go and talk about the right mouse button or secondary button. The right mouse button or right click is primarily used to bring up a contextual menu uh, either for the document or for an object. For example, if I uh, right click in a blank area, um, I'm going to get several options in a, a pop-up menu that allow me to you know, activate a class, a layer, uh, force select an object, which we mentioned in a, a previous video, uh, select all, paste, you know, various document settings and uh, layer settings as well. However, if I do the same action, if I uh, do a right click on uh, directly on an object, I get a different set of options. Some are similar, uh, but you have the additional cut copy options as well as uh, send, rotate, uh, lock on lock, for example. Um, these options actually vary depending on the object you select. Uh, so a, um, a, a basic circle, polygon, rectangle will have certain certain options. A symbol or a, uh, a plug-in object may have different options. All right, now let's go in and uh, talk about the middle mouse button or middle mouse wheel. First off, one of the primary uses of the middle mouse button is to uh, basically activate the pan tool to allow for quick uh, navigation in a file. So if you press down and hold on the middle mouse button, uh, you'll see that the cursor changes into the icon for the pan tool, which is a hand. And then as you move left, right, up, down, this essentially moves your view of objects uh, relative to the page. Uh, this is actually not moving the objects at all. You're just moving your view of the objects. A secondary action for the middle mouse button uh, is the scroll action. Uh, th this is uh, the primary way to zoom in or out in the software. Using a mouse with an accurate scroll wheel will make navigation much easier. Coming up in the uh, next video, we'll go over the uh, snapping features.